In this video, I'm going to talk about how to develop a Ohm's Law and Power Wheel um, cheat sheet from scratch using a rational process. When I did my homework trying to understand these concepts and how, how the wheel helps solve equations, I was disappointed with the lack of consistency between the diagrams and I couldn't really figure out how people were developing them. So I thought, you know what, I will explain how I developed mine. It's based on uh, one that I saw by Tom Henry um, to some degree, uh, but there, a lot of this is my own work. So hopefully it'll be useful to you and it'll help me to remember what I did. So the cheat sheet here just has the power wheel, which is nice. Uh, might look a little different than you're used to. The power and Ohm's law wheels, some mnemonics for remembering those, an acronym to drive the whole thing, which I'll describe in a sec, and then the derived formulas. That's what we're working towards, and we'll start very simply. But the acronym that's going to drive the whole thing is called is WIRE, W-I-R-E. Um, w is watts, I is intensity, is really the, the symbol for current measured in amps, resistance is measured in ohms. Um, and E uh, is what you may have usually seen as volts, but basically it's the electromotive force. So that is it. Let's jump into creating the power wheel. The first thing we want to do is draw a simple circle. Then we want to draw another circle outside of that circle, leaving room for the, um, the various formulas. That's it. And then we're going to draw a horizontal line and a vertical line. Once we've done that, we can start plugging in some... Um, information. I'm going to put my wire acronym in here and you're going to notice that whenever I do things with wire I start with W and end with E and it goes in a clockwise direction. So I put the W, I figure out what clockwise is and then I put the I, R, and E. Boom. That gives us the inter, the inner circle with our W, I, R, E um, variables. Um, but this is going to, the wire thing is going to carry throughout. So um, but before that, we got to draw some more lines. So we start by driving uh, 30 and 60 degree lines um, in each of the quadrants. Those lines don't go all the way to the center. They go just to the edge of the inner circle. Um, so that's usually what you see when you see a power wheel drawn. The next thing we're going to do is, I told you we're going to start with W and N with I, R, and E. Um, I draw it uh, clockwise, so we're going to put some label, some uh, variable names out on the outer edge, um, I, R, and E. These will serve a purpose later. I won't belabor it at the moment, but this is W, I, R, E for the W quadrant. And then um, we're going to start with W, and we're going to go to I, and then R, and then E um, for the I quadrant. And similarly for the R quadrant and the E quadrant. So we got wire going all the way around uh, each of these things. So I'll get rid of the um, blue lines, and this is what we're left with. This is our sketchy outline version of Ohm's Law and power, the Power Wheel. So what are those letters on the outside that spell wire several times? Um, they, they represent the variable that's missing in the equation. Um, and they're there kind of just to give us a ladder upon which to build um, our derived equations rationally. Because if they weren't there, I'd just sort of pick a place and sort of pop them in, and I'd pretty quick I'd lose track. So always going to follow um, some rational process. Here I've added two uh, little wheels, one for power and one for Ohm's law. The power law states that uh, wattage is equal to the intensity or the current times voltage. And Ohm's law says voltage is equal to uh, in intensity or current times resistance. The way I remember which the way that I remember the order is through mnemonics, um, and there's many out there. Use which ones, ever ones work for you. But for me, it says where in exile is power, and exile in Rome is ohms. And um, the first word goes on top, and the other two go underneath. Um, the wheel is designed in a, in a kind of specific way. The, the horizontal bars going across represent um, division or the fraction bar. The vertical bar between the I and the E and the I and the R, those represent multiplication. So when I say W is equal to I times E, that's because 
using the wheel that W is on top and it's equal to the product of I and E because of the vertical bar. If I was looking for I in the power equation, I would see that W is on top of the horizontal bar, so it's a fraction. So I is equal to W over E. And E is equal to W over I, and the W is always on top. Um, similarly, for the Ohm's law, we have E is equal to the product of I and R. That's by the vertical bar. And then if we look at I, we see the horizontal bar between E and R. We see that I is equal to E over R. And R similarly is equal to E over I. E is always on top on the Ohm's equations, and W is always on top on the power equations. So let's get to deriving these equations using just these devices that we have here. Um, the first one we're going to attack is power, and I already told you W is equal to I times E, and we're going to use that to derive the next two equations, one for I and one for E, um, in terms of power. So W is equal to I over E. That's our first one. We're going to plug that into our power wheel because it is our first derived equation. And there it goes. And you'll notice that it goes where the R is. That's because we don't have an R in the equation. Okay, so, that, that, so you know where it goes. W is equal to I over E. We can use that and some simple math to, to determine what I is. I is obviously equal to divide both sides by E. And you get I is equal to W over E. And E similarly is equal to W over I. Move the I over and you have W over I. And we plug those into the power wheel. Okay, and for the um, I quadrant, the W over E goes to the R because there's a missing R. And similarly, in the E quadrant, the W over I value goes in the R um, sector because we're missing an R. And that's three of the six easy equations. Ohm's law works the same way. E is equal to I times R, and we can derive the other two. So getting on it, we have E equals IR, and we're going to put that into um, the E quadrant, and we don't have W, so we're going to put it in the W sector. We can now come and say that I is equal to divide both sides by R, and you have I is equal to E over R, and if we're looking for R, R is equal to E over I. So using the same simple math. And there we have six or half of the um, formulas for, for the power wheel. Just from that simple movement. The, the other six are a little more uh, fun, a little more challenging, but not so much so. The main difference between the first six and the next six are that the first six are reliant only on one or the other of the little miniature wheels. The last six depend on both of them used in combination. And so to keep this thing rational, so far so good, right? To keep it rational, we're going to start with the W quadrant and we're going to start in the I sector and we're going to work our way clockwise around the wheel. So I'm going to work on the, uh, the, the missing formula there that goes in the I quadrant of the W sector. Sorry, W sector Eh, I sector of the W quadrant, using that terminology. All right, so uh, without further ado, though, let's think about it a little bit. So right now I know that W is equal to IE in this quadrant. That's for sure. I don't have I, though, but I do have E, but I don't have I. So we got to get I, and I, I've already used my power wheel. So now I'm going to go over here to Ohm's Law and say, what is I? I is equal to E over R. The Since I've already populated this with these two equations. I don't really need to go to back to these. I can just look and say W is equal to IE and I um, from the from the I quadrant, I is equal to E over R. Okay, so those two equations, W is equal to IE from the W quadrant and I is equal to ER from the I quadrant give us enough to get started. So there we go. We have the two equations we're going to use and we're going to use them in the following way. So we have W is equal to I times E. We don't have I, so we have to get I. Well, I is equal to E over R. So we can use um, W is equal to E over R times E. And doing the, the math, the algebra there, you get E squared over R is the uh, seventh equation. We plug that into the wheel. Simple and straightforward. The next one we're looking for is where we were missing an E. So we 
we're going to use w is equal to i over e, but we don't know e, so we have to get e. So we look down in the e quadrant, and we have our choice of using a power equation or a um, an Ohm's equation. And since we're already using a power equation, we're going to use Ohm's. Uh, so we pick the, where we're missing w there, the ir. So we have w equals ie, and e is equal to ir. Combining those equations by substituting in IR for the value of E, we get W is equal to I times I times R, which is nothing more than I squared times R, and we plug that into the power wheel. The next one we're going after is where um, we're looking for I, where E is not known, and we know uh, based on uh, the Ohm's equation, we'll just pick it, the Ohm's equation, I is equal to E over R but we don't have E, so we have to go get E. E is equal to W over I um, in the power equation. So we're combining the two equations. We have I equals ER and E equals W over I. So substituting in W over I for E, we get I is equal to W over I divided by R. Doing a little bit of manipulation algebra, we find that this is uh, equivalent to W over IR, multiply both sides by I, I squared is equal to W over R, take the square root of both sides and we wind up with the square root of W over R is equal to I. And that becomes our next equation. That moves us down into the R um, quadrant and we're we're, we'll start looking for the E. We only have the, right now we only have the Ohm's equation for R anyway, so R is equal to E over I, but we're missing E, so we have to go get E, and we're looking for E out of the power equation, which is W over I. So W over I, um, E equals W over I, R equals E over I. And then we just do algebraic manipulations, and we substitute in what we the power um, value for E, which is W over I, over I. Do the math. It, that's W over I times I, it's W over I squared, and that, plug that in. That's it. The next one we're looking for is the missing, we're missing I. We have R equals EI, but we gotta get I. So we look up into the I quadrant and we look for the power equation, I is equal to W over E. And there are two equations that we're gonna combine. We're gonna substitute in W over E for I, so it's E over W over E. Do a little bit of algebra here. And we multiply E times the reciprocal of W over E, which is E over W, it becomes E squared over W. Nice and simple. Plug it in, and we're left with the final one, which is uh, where we're looking for E when we don't have I, and we're going to use the ohmic equation here. So we have E is equal to IR, is, is the... Uh, base equation, but we don't have I, so we have to go get I from the power equation, I is equal to W over E. So E is equal to I times R, I is equal to W over E. We're going to substitute in W over E for I, so we have W over E times R, E is equal to W over E times R. And we do, um, we multiply both sides by E, we get E squared is equal to the product of W and R. We take the square root of both sides and we get the square root of W R times R. And that gives us the last, uh, the final equation for our power wheel. And we did it in a way that we can work through it one step at a time, go around the wheel. So that's my rational wheel. Uh, one last little bit is um, WIRE to remember it, power in watts, um, intensity in amps, resistance in ohms, E in volts. That's it. Thanks for watching.